Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Dr. V. Jay Kumar. I make lecture videos for the benefit of mechanical engineering students. In previous videos, we have solved numerical problems on partial balancing of uncoupled inside cylinder and uncoupled outside cylinder locomotives. In this video, we will be discussing the interesting underlying concepts of partial balancing of coupled locomotives. So let's get started. We know that this topic is coming under balancing of two cylinder engines, which is coming under balancing of reciprocating masses. We know that locomotives can be classified based on the number of pairs of wheels arranged as coupled locomotive and uncoupled locomotive. Let us see the arrangement of uncoupled locomotives. We have driving wheels and trailing wheels. As you could see here, trailing wheels are not coupled with driving wheels. That's why these are known as uncoupled locomotives. In uncoupled locomotives, four planes have been considered for balancing. Two planes of driving wheels and two planes of cylinders. So we have converted uncoupled locomotive problem into an equivalent four rotating masses revolving in different plane problems and we have solved the problem. It should be noted that in uncoupled locomotives, the balancing masses are distributed on the driving wheels only. This is the balancing mass. Same way we have balancing mass at the other end of the driving wheel as well. As you could see here, there are no balancing masses added on the trailing wheels. But the uncoupled locomotives have become obsolete. These locomotives were used very rarely. In practice, coupled locomotives have been used widely. This is the arrangement of coupled locomotives. We have driving wheels and trailing wheels. Trailing wheels are coupled with the driving wheels through coupling rod. As you could see here, the yellow coupling rod couples driving wheel with the trailing wheels. These are cranks of the coupling rods which couples wheels and the coupling rod. Why we need to couple them? Coupling all the wheels together increases the wheels resistance against slipping on the rails, which results into more tractive airflow. We already know that cranks of the cylinder will have 90 degree with each other for easier starting and stopping of the engine. It should be noted here that the cranks of the coupling rod will be placed in diametrically opposite to the cylinder crank. For example, let us take the crank of the coupling rod on the right hand side wheels. This crank is placed 180 degree or in the opposite direction with respect to the position of the neighboring crank of the cylinder. So if this is 90 degree, this will be 270 degree. Same way, the crank of the coupling rod of the left hand side wheel will be in the opposite direction to that of the neighboring crank of the cylinder. If this crank is assumed zero degree, the crank of the coupling rod will be placed at 180 degree. 
so we got a clear idea about position of four cranks two cylinder cranks and two cranks of the coupling rod it should be noted that the coupling rod has some mass the coupling rod revolves when the wheels rotate therefore the coupling rod mass has to be balanced for which we can consider this coupling rod mass as equivalent to a revolving mass which is acting at the end of the crank pin here by using that logic we can balance this coupling rod just now we have learned that in uncoupled locomotives we have considered four planes for balancing in coupled locomotives we have to consider six planes for balancing let us see what are those six planes one plane for wheel one year same way we will be having another plane for wheel two also we have rotation of the crank so there will be a plane of rotation at crank of cylinder 1 same way we will be having another plane of crank of cylinder 2 so totally we have considered four planes this is what we have done in uncoupled locomotives in coupled locomotives the only difference is that we have the inclusion of the coupling rod on both the sides so we will be considering additional planes of rotation at the crank pin of crank of the coupling rod on both ends so we have planes 5 and 6 now there you are this is the fifth plane to be considered at the crank pin of the crank of the coupling rod one same way i will have another plane of rotation at crank pin of the crank of the coupling rod two so this coupled locomotive problem can be converted into equivalent six revolving masses rotating in different plane problems by using that logic we can solve this difficult problem another interesting thing is in coupled locomotives the balancing masses are distributed among all the driving and trailing wheels we have already seen that in uncoupled locomotives balancing masses are added only in the driving wheels whereas in the coupled locomotives balancing masses are distributed in the driving wheels as well as in the trailing wheels as you could see there these are balancing masses so this is another interesting concept in the coupled locomotives if you see from the left hand side view of this coupled locomotive you can find the position of the crank and the coupling rod and also the position of the balancing masses in different wheels same way when i try to draw the right hand side view of the coupled locomotive we will be getting this diagram so from these two diagrams we can understand that the position of the cranks of the coupling rod and the coupling rod are not the same on both the side point number 1 point number 2 the magnitude of the masses to be added on the driving and trailing wheels need not to be the same in fact they would be different point number 3 the location of the balancing mass in the driving wheel and the location of the balancing mass to be added in the trailing wheels are not the same they will be different so these are very interesting aspects our aim will be to find the magnitude and direction of the balancing masses that ought to be added 
on the driving and trailing wheels in a coupled locomotives. So to solve the problem, we will be using the same notations that we have used for uncoupled locomotives. Also, the key formula to find maximum and minimum values of tractive effort, maximum swaying couple, hammer blow, maximum speed of locomotive without lifting the wheels from the rails, all these formulae remain same even for the coupled locomotives as well. We can classify types of problems in partial balancing in locomotives under four types. In type 1, we call it as balancing of uncoupled inside the cylinder locomotives for which we have already solved a numerical problem and presented in lecture number 32. In the type 2, we have balancing problem of uncoupled outside cylinder locomotive. Under this category, we have solved a numerical problem in lecture 33. These two are coming under uncoupled. Now here we will have type 3 where we have balancing of coupled inside cylinder locomotive and type 4 balancing of coupled outside cylinder locomotive. So we will be solving a numerical problem on partial balancing of coupled inside cylinder locomotive in our next video. That's it. Take care. Bye.